Hey guys, Jason here. Welcome back to Donut Films. Today I'm going to be reviewing Child's Play from 1988 or 1999. I don't really remember when it came out. I wasn't alive when it came out. Uh, this movie is directed by Tom Holland. No, not Spider-Man Tom Holland. I know whenever you hear the name Tom Holland, everyone thinks of uh, Spider-Man. But this is actually a movie director who uh, directed this movie. And this movie was also written by Don Mancina, the creator of Chucky. He really wants you to know that he's gay and he's the, the, he's the creator of Chucky. Uh, you may be wondering, why am I reviewing Child's Play? Jason, didn't you just review She-Hulk, you know, a Marvel show, it's like, less than a week ago? And to that I answer, no, it's not weird at all actually, because the new Chucky Season 2 is coming out in like, October. So I want to review all the Chucky movies up until then. I might skip Curse and Cult, just in case I, I might not have time. And uh, yeah, it's, it's going to be really fun, because if it wasn't already obvious, I am I am a massive Chucky fan. I fucking love this dude so much. He was, he's one of the best slashers ever, he's up there with Jason, he's probably better than Jason, he's probably the best, like, horror movie villain there is. I, I just love this dude so much, so I'm, I'm just gonna put him over here real quick. Here we go. Alright, I'm gonna leave him right there. Anyway, so let me tell you a bit about this movie, and my experience with it. Most people, that when they watch this movie, they were about, like, 8 or 7, and they got scared, they had nightmares. For me, it's actually a lot more different. I've always wanted to watch horror movies when I was younger, I, I was always so, like, intrigued by it. I remember I watched a scene from Freddy vs. Jason and, you know, seeing all Freddy's limbs get cut off. I was like, so intrigued, like, oh my god. But there was always one movie I always wanted to watch, and that was Child's Play. I was just so intrigued by the, the idea of a killer doll, Chucky. I always heard that name, Chucky, before. I was like, who, who is that? Who is that? And, uh, yeah, I was originally going to watch this movie with my friend when I first watched it. I, I would have been, like, 10 years old. This was 2016. And my mum would not let me watch it at all. She was like, no, nah, you're not watching that movie. It's... it's it's, it's, it's way too scary. It's actually not scary. This movie is actually rated PG-13 in most countries. After I watched this movie as a little boy, I was I was like, yep, yeah, I love horror, I love slashes, this is something I'm going to get into. Anyway, let's get into the actual movie. So the movie opens up in Chicago 1988, and we see Charles Lee Ray being chased down by Mike Norris. And it's a bit of a shootout, they both have guns. It's really weird to see a serial killer, the main serial killer of the whole movie, holding a gun at the start. I think that's mostly because in the TV show we always saw Charles Lee Ray with a knife. It's just weird to see him with a gun. And the first thing we actually see is him getting shot in the arse, so... There you go, that's your introduction to human Chucky, I guess. And basically, we don't know why Charles Lee Ray has been caught, or why he's on the run, what he did. It's actually explained in later movies what actually happened, but we'll get in into that more later. All we know is he's on the run, and his accomplice, uh, Eddie Caputo... Oh, shit. He drives off, and Charles is abandoned. Now, Charles Lee Ray is actually played by Brad Dorif. He was only supposed to be in the movie for, like, the opening scene. And guess what? In the rest of the movie, Chucky was going to have a female voice. That's right. Chucky. You stupid bitch, you filthy slut! Did you fuck with me? That was supposed to be a girl. And luckily it was changed because of early test screenings. This movie was originally called Blood Buddy or uh, Batteries Not Included. They showed it to a bunch of people and everyone found Chucky so funny. Honestly, I don't find Chucky scary, but that would have just ruined it for me. So I'm really glad that they brought him back. And apparently it was actually really hard for Brad Dorf to do the ADR because he had to do it last minute. And he actually had a daughter at the time, and his daughter walked into the recording booth as he was screaming, and she was fucking petrified. And I screamed like I was dying for about a minute and a half. It ended, and Fiona burst into tears. I suddenly turned around and ran out of the out of there. I had to go find her and calm her down and say, "I'm fine." <laughs> so there's a bit of some behind the scenes for this movie. Anyway, so after Charles gets shot, he walks into the toy store where we see the good guy dolls and their title card. Now, here's something that the remake, I think the remake did a lot better, is the name Good Guy Dolls. I feel like the name Buddy was a, is like a lot better. Originally, this movie was just called Blood Buddy, as I said. And I don't know, I think the, the Buddy doll sounds better than Good Guy. That's just my opinion. We also see a Good Guy gun, so they did sell Good Guy guns for the Good Guy dolls to hold, which is really weird. Anyway, so Charles is about to die. And he screams, he screams at Mike that he's going to kill him. I'm going to get you, and I'm going to get Eddie, no matter what. Kind of goofy, but, you know. Anyway, so he does the a day Dewey Dumbala thing. It sounds a lot different than I remember. He says a lot of weird shit. In later movies, that that chant is actually a lot more, like, longer and shortened in some in some points. But, you know, that, that's the that's the first voodoo chant. And then we a lightning strikes into the store and explodes the entire thing, which I do not remember at all. I don't remember it being that like that big. Big budget movie, apparently. Anyway, it's made very clear to the audience that Charles Lee Ray's soul is in the good guy doll. I'll explain why later that isn't really a good thing. I kind of feel like they shouldn't have done that. They shouldn't have made it so obvious. I'll explain later, but anyway, we get introduced to Alex Vinson playing Andy Barkley, which is so cute. 
He's, he's trying to make breakfast and he, he burns the toast. He's trying to pour cereal and he pours it all over the kitchen. Really cute. The acting for, for um, Andy is also very robotic and like, you know, it, it, he was a child actor. It, it wasn't that good. But the reason I'm actually bringing this up is, is because 40 years later, Alex Vincent still sounds the same. He still sounds so robotic. Wake up, mommy, wake up. I made you breakfast in bed. Jake Wheeler, where are you? Chucky's not with anyone, is he? Somebody there. I think that's mostly because he didn't do acting in like his his 20s and his 30s. He just recently came back to it apparently. So that kind of explains why he's really shit at acting. We get introduced to, uh, I think Catherine Hicks is her name. She plays Andy's mum. She's actually probably, I think she's the main character of the movie. She's actually really good. Uh, and we see that it's, it's actually Andy's birthday. And we find out what Andy really wants is a good guy doll. The thing, the thing right back there, you see that? Yeah, he wants that. <laughs> But we find out her mum can't actually afford the doll because it's like a hundred dollars, which is like, yeah, that's that's pretty accurate to real life. These things are fucking heaps of money. Some of them are a thousand dollars, so you, can you really blame her? We also get introduced to Aunt Maggie, which is a very I I got I got mixed feelings on Aunt Maggie. She was actually pretty funny at the start of the movie, and then later in the movie she turns into like an absolute bitch, and it's kind of like, okay, you kind of deserve to die then. Why why are you bullying Andy? Stop doing that. Anyway, so Andy do eventually does get the doll, and the puppeteering is actually really good. It's like, it's surprisingly good for the time. This was in the late 80s, and yeah, there was, there was pup the puppeteering on the eyes and, you know, the mouth moving, it was actually really good. Hi, I'm Chucky, and I'm your friend to the end. And surprisingly, six-year-old Alex Vincent was not scared of the doll at all. He knew it was fake, he knew it was just a movie, but in, in later movies, uh, there was a girl named Alice. She was actually scared of the doll in real life, so they had to, like, do CGI to get rid of all the scars, but that's later movies. So for right now, it's going pretty good. So anyway, Maggie's babysitting Andy Barkley because uh, his, his mom has to go to work. So she's she's babysitting him. The first thing we actually see Chucky do is watch TV. He literally turns on the remote and just sits on the couch watching it, which is like pretty funny. That's the first thing we see Chucky do as a doll. He looks at the TV, he's like, all right, I'm going to watch the news. And then Aunt Maggie sees sees Chucky watching TV and she's like, hold, hold on a second, Andy, did you fucking do that? I told you to go to bed. And then we get a really, really funny scene with Andy saying, Chucky, did you do that? Did you do that, Chucky? Yeah. Anyway, we get the first Chucky kill of the movie. Basically, Aunt Maggie gets hit with a hammer out the window, which is like, that's, that's Chucky's first kill. He get, he doesn't even use a knife, his iconic weapon. He uses a hammer and like, she falls out the window and onto a fucking van. That, that, that's pretty crazy. Her original death was actually supposed to be in a bathtub. Chucky was meant to like throw some like, electronics into the bath and she'll get electrocuted, die. That's in a later movie, that actually happens to Jennifer Tilly. But the reason they, they cut that death out was because they didn't have the budget. So you're telling me electrocuting her in the bath was too expensive, but throwing her out a window was not? It's like, okay, I, I can't really, I don't know really know what the budget was for this movie. I think it was like $10 million, so I don't know why they couldn't do that death. I'm not complaining, I still think her falling out the window is pretty cool. Andy's mum comes home and sees that the police are at the house and they realise, oh shit, Aunt Maggie fell out the window, she's fucking dead. And here's where the movie kind of gets a little bit like, uh, why, why would you do that? Because we, we know for a fact that Chucky did kill her, we know it wasn't Andy. But like, in in the in the scene where Aunt Maggie gets killed, Chucky run past the screen so fast, you can't really tell. Was that Andy or was that Chucky? Because they're both wearing the same clothes. Andy? Personally, I feel like it would have been better if we didn't know that Chucky was alive. What if that was Andy? What if what if Andy did kill Aunt Maggie? I feel like there's, there's no mystery to it because we already know for a fact that Chucky is alive. We saw the entire voodoo chant. Originally, there was meant to be no voodoo. Originally, Andy was supposed to bleed onto the doll and then the doll would come alive and start killing. And it was supposed to be like a weird murder mystery thing. But, you know, I, I still kind of think it, it would have been better if it was a bit of a mystery. But who cares? And I feel like this movie also brings in a pretty good theme of like parents not believing the kid. Even though Andy is actually telling the truth, like, Chucky was on the kitchen counter, but like no one believes him. And I feel like that's something where the, the remake didn't really do it that good. It's like, come on, your teenage son is crying. He's saying that this doll, who's AI, is killing stuff and like you don't believe him. I feel like it's better here because it's a six year old boy, six year olds make up stuff. And I think I feel like, it, yeah, it was a pretty good theme for the for the movie to have where they, you just don't believe the kids. Anyway, so the next scene is where Andy skips school with Chucky because Chucky's actually whispering in his ear to go to the train station and go to Eddie Caputo's house. Eddie Caputo at the start of the movie who abandoned him and got him killed. Oh, shit. And this is where Andy's IQ levels kind of change. You, you're telling me this boy who, who can't even make his own breakfast and knows how to catch a train by himself? I know uh, Chucky's whispering in his ear, but like, I don't know, that, that seemed kind of kind of weird to me. So Andy goes to Eddie Caputo's house and he leaves Chucky on a chair. He's like, alright, I, go, I gotta go take a piss. I'm gonna go piss in the snow real quick. And then Chucky starts running really fast into Eddie's house. Eddie gets woken up by a noise and he starts shooting his gun inside the house. And I'm like, dude, are you serious? You, you do realize rats are living in the house, making noise, 
and you start you start firing your gun like what what are you doing he's very trigger happy apparently then chucky turns on the oven and then eddie shoots and then the entire house blows up and i'm pretty sure the filmmakers actually blew up a house and we, we also get a pretty funny scene with alex vincent saying chucky The next scene is actually a really hard scene to watch. I don't know. The first time I watched it, I was actually crying. It's such a sad scene. The, basically, the police find Andy. The police realize, okay, this kid just blew up a house. He killed the babysitter. We, we got to interrogate him. Yeah, that, they, it, it, even to this day, that scene is very hard for me to watch. I don't know. There's nothing about it that just makes me really sad inside. So Andy goes to the mental institution because it obviously looks like he killed two people. And Andy's mum takes the doll home. And this is where we get the most iconic scene of the entire movie. She starts looking at the doll and she's like, come on, speak to me, speak to me, speak to me. And Chucky just says nothing. And then she starts looking at the box and batteries fall out. And she's like, what? What the hell? How is he speaking without any batteries? And she looks on the box and it says batteries included. And the first time I watched that, I was like, oh my god, that's, that's uh, like such a cool plot twist. Even though we already know that he's alive and it would have been way better if we didn't know that. It's still a, a bit of dramatic irony and it's still an iconic scene. Then she's like, all right, I'm fucking sick of this shit. And she picks up the doll, lights up the fireplace and says, talk to me, damn it. Otherwise, I'm going to throw you in the fire. And this is where we see Chucky actually start talking. And it's a really funny scene. <laughs> this was like the only part of this movie I saw before actually watching it the first time. And I found it so funny. I, I immediately knew I was going to love this movie. Anyway, so Annie's mum knows that Chucky's alive. So she goes to Detective Doris and she's like, look, look at my hand. I'm bitten. I'm bitten. And he's like, oh. How did you do that to yourself? Stop hurting yourself. Like, are you a fucking idiot? Clearly those are the teeth marks and they're not a fucking adult teeth. Those look, those look like baby teeth marks. Andy's mum's like, fuck it. All right, I'm going to find the, the guy who's, who sold me that doll and I'm going to fucking search for him. And I'm going to find out why this doll's alive and who it is. And we find out the doll was actually from the uh, explosion at the beginning of the movie. And it's kind of like, how did Chucky get back in the box? Did, did the dude find him and put him in the box or was he already in there? That doesn't, that doesn't really make any sense to me, but who cares? Andy's mum is like, okay, I know Chucky's in the door. I'm going to go find Charles Lee Ray's house. And M Mike is still like, oh, yeah, I, I don't believe you. I'm just going to drive away. And this is where we get a really, really intense scene of Chucky in the car with Mike. He actually has a knife. Like, where the fuck did Chucky get a knife from? I don't know. Probably, probably the kitchen. And he starts trying to stab Mike through the car. And you might, you might be thinking, why doesn't Mike just, you know, stop the car? Chucky actually puts his hand down on the pedal. So he, all he has to do is fucking steer. And it's such an intense scene. You don't, you don't know if, if Mike's going to survive or not. And it's actually pretty intense. Mike finds out Chuck is alive and he's like, okay, Andy and Andy's mum are both telling the truth. I better go and talk and talk to Andy's mum. And we actually see what Chucky's apartment looks like. And it's actually pretty different than what the show is. Because in the show, Ch Chucky was living with Tiffany. And in this movie, he's living in this voodoo house, which is a kind of, I think it's a bit of a plot hole. Maybe he was living in two houses at that time when he died. But I don't know. The next scene we get is a, actually another pretty iconic scene where Chucky goes and talks to the voodoo master, you know, John, the black dude. And there's some really good puppeteering work and actual physical acting because they got a little person in like a, in a Chucky costume and put him in a giant set to make it look like the actual dolls moving around. That's a pretty creative idea. They didn't really do that in the remake. In the remake, they just use CGI, which is, come on, that, that's fucking lazy. And this is the only scene where Chucky uses a knife to kill someone. He doesn't even stab him. He stabs a voodoo doll of the, of the voodoo master and he fucking dies. Chucky does not stab a single person in this movie. Think about that. Chucky, the killer doll. The one who always has a knife in the poster. He doesn't stab a single person in this movie, which is kind of like, that's disappointing, but the voodoo master dies and Chucky realizes that he needs to put his soul into the first person he revealed his full name to, just so happens to be Andy. I have a date with a six year old boy. People find that line really fucking creepy, but it's like, he, he was obviously just saying that as a joke. A lot of people think that Chucky's a pedophile, which he's not. He's not a pedophile. He's not Freddy Krueger over here. We finally cut back to Andy in the mental asylum and he finds out that Chucky's going to kill him. And this is where we see some actually pretty good acting from, from young Alex Vincent. He's actually crying. He's actually terrified for his life. Please stop. Change. Do it. Get out of here. Do it! There was originally a deleted scene where Chucky, like, tricks a disabled girl into helping him get into Andy's room and, like, find the key and shit. I feel like they should have kept that in the movie because the movie is called Child's Play and Chucky only interacts with one kid. I feel like it would have been better if we, like, dig into the idea of Chucky can manipulate kids to do anything he wants. So Chucky gets into Andy's room, and he fucking tears a blanket off, and he sees that there's pillows on the bed. And it's like, are you telling me six-year-old Alex Vincent, who doesn't even know how to pause you or knew how to do that? That's kind of weird. But he escapes, and then uh, one of the doctors find it, finds him, and he's like, okay, you're being crazy. Put the scalpel down. I'm going to inject you. That dude looks like a fucking pedophile. I'm sorry. I fucking hate this dude. He's probably one of the worst characters in the entire movie. I'm so glad he fucking died. He was pissing me off. 
Andy somehow runs back home by himself on the streets of Chicago. Like, how the fuck did a six-year-old boy do that? Did he catch a train? I don't know. But basically, he locks himself inside the apartment waiting for Chucky. And this is actually a pretty good scene. It's just a little boy with a baseball bat versus a killer doll with a knife. It's like, it's pretty intense. And that's something where the remake didn't do that good either. It's like, seriously, you're telling me this teenage boy can't fucking kick over a doll? You serious? Like, Andy gets knocked out by Chucky. <laughs> That's one of very few jokes he has in this movie. Chucky doesn't really make any jokes. He barely even speaks, to be honest. This movie is actually kind of boring if you want to rewatch it multiple times. If you want to rewatch this movie, wait like a couple of years and then watch it again because this movie is fucking hard to rewatch. I'm sorry, it's so boring. Chucky starts doing the voodoo chant on Andy, and just as his soul is about to go into the body, the adults come into the house and save him. Mike Norris gets knocked out like a fucking idiot. And this is where we get another iconic scene where Chucky is in the fireplace and he's about to be lit on fire. <laughs> We're friends to the end, remember? This is the end, friend. Anyway, so Chucky gets lit on fire, and I'm wondering, how did they do that? Did they put a little person in a suit and do a fire stunt? Because that's the first time I've ever seen that. I also know that they actually set an actual puppet on fire, like a mechanical puppet. You may think Chucky's dead, but he's actually not. No matter what you do to Chucky, he always comes back. And this is something that always happens in the final act of the movie. No matter if, if he gets melted with plastic, or his face gets sliced off, or you stab him, he will always come back. We actually find out the only way to kill Chucky is shooting him through the heart, and that's exactly what they do. Hi, I'm Chucky. Wanna play? That may seem scary to some people, but not to me. In fact, this movie isn't really scary. If anything, this movie is really, really sad. The ending shot is Andy looking at the burnt corpse of Chucky, and you're just realizing, damn, this, this kid's childhood is fucking ruined. He's never going to be the same again. I'd give this movie about like a 6.5 out of 10. It's, it's not the, the best child's play movie. It's not my favorite, but it's still the first horror movie I ever watched, and it'll always have a place deep down in my heart. Anyway, that's my review of Child's Play from 1988. I hope you guys enjoyed. Tell me if you're excited for me to review Child's Play 2. Okay, Chucky, do you have anything to say before I end the video?